Disappointing for Scotland after all the anticipation, all the expectation. Well, this man really put a, a double nail in their coffin today with two excellent goals. And uh, Damien, uh, it's going to be really tough for Scotland from here on in, considering they've got to go to Wembley to face England and then finish against Croatia. To qualify, definitely, Peter. Um, I think they'll really struggle uh, to get themselves up for the England game. That'll obviously be, be no problem at all. But uh, today will be a hard one to take. Um, I don't think it's a fair reflection of the game. I think Scotland had chances. The difference for me is Schlick, absolute world-class finishing. Um, Dykes probably had the most of the chances for Scotland um, and obviously didn't score. Um, but, yeah, they just lacked that cutting edge in the top end of the pitch. And there was, I can't say there was a lot, of, a lot between the teams. So a hard one to take and, yeah, yeah um, but there shouldn't be any problem to be getting up for the England team. But they'll do well to qualify. They'll struggle. They will. It'll be tough. And yeah, I mean, they'll enjoy going down to Wembley and trying to put it up to England. But Kevin, going on today's performance, I suppose the positives they'll take from it is that they did create the chances. But that cutting edge in front of goal mm. was that, that's That's going to be more frustrating than positive for them. To know they... They should have, could have got something out of that game. They had the better, the way better the chances. Um, you know, the better performance really all around. They would be just disappointed with the goals they conceded. There were two world-class finishes, but still Scotland had enough clear-cut chances themselves that they could have got something out of the game, if not won it. And now, you know, it reminds me a bit of us in 2012. You lose that first game and you have to face England and Croatia. <laughs> Um, it was Italy and Spain to come for us and you, you, you realise straight away after the game you saw Robertson on his knees um, it's a real real uphill one from here they needed to get something a point something from that game yeah. and they didn't and I think they know themselves it's, it's nearly a nearly an impossible task well if you are going to compare it to 2012 obviously after we lost to Croatia ok we thought we're still in with a chance here we'll back ourselves to beat Spain and, uh, and Italy but I think we score or conceded against Spain after one or two minutes. Um, so we're one nil down against Spain. It kind of hit me, I don't know about you, that <laughs> we're out here. We're not getting yeah. back into this uh, beating Spain because I don't think I hardly touched the ball in the game. I'm not sure about yourself. You didn't play, did you? No, Sorry, Kev, no. hanging out there. It was, um, it was the third game. I was, it, was yeah. a, it was a dead ringer at that stage. It but it could, be, it could be like England. England's start off well on Wednesday or Thursday whenever the game is 1-2-0 they might know 10-15 minutes in the game okay we're going home so uh, it could be a tough day for them certainly could uh, I mean what can Steve Clark say to, to lift the players because they know this would have been the game that was targeted to try Of, that the Czech Republic were possibly perceived as the weakest team in the group. They've proved that they're not today. No, listen, they might, I didn't think they were the weakest team in the group. I, I, did, I did think Scotland um, were, but going on that performance tonight, Scotland were, were decent at the time. They created chances. Um, I think that's what Steve Clark has to do. You know, he has to go back into the dressing room, point out all these details. They'll sit down and watch a video in the next couple of days. He'll show them the chances to create. Like, what did the Czechs create? You know, uh, what was he? 60 yards from goal? A uh, wonder goal and a fantastic, fantastic header. Um, you know, they'll, they'll feel really pleased with their overall performance and really frustrated that they didn't get something from this because they were there for the taking. Yeah. Scotland at home, and they did put in a decent performance. Their crowd reacted at times like they weren't playing well. I thought they played well for them. A bit direct at times, but they still created the chances um, that they just didn't have the quality I suppose to take. OK, well, we'll reflect on that one very short. Good day for him, uh, Damien. That's what you want your striker to do. It didn't matter too much that he hadn't been in the game a whole lot during the first half. In fact, uh, you know, I mean, he wasn't really holding things up, wasn't doing too much effective, but when he got his opportunity, he scored, and that's what you want your striker to do. Yeah, anything uh, good from the Czech Republic today, Peter came through him, and it's just the moments of brilliance. That's why he's had transfer fees accumulating to 70 million and the likes of Dykes uh, hasn't. Um, if you see here, the couple of little scans, all top fo footballers do it, always have a picture of the pitch. Um, and then the execution, you have to say, is amazing. Why Marshall is that high, I don't know. Czech Republic aren't being that aggressive with their pressing. They don't need him in build-up. He's so, so high, it's unbelievable. But like I said, the, the finish is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you'd have to say goal the tournament, yeah. Yeah, great spot, wasn't it? Yeah, great spot. Um, listen, I love the, the Italy's third goal because the way they moved, but you have to put that as number one. It's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it, Kevin? Yeah, I... 
when you're talking about top players looking up, when I got the ball in that position, I never once looked to see where no. the keeper was. Um, <laughs> in fairness, Marshall, I think, knows he's in no man's land there. The minute the ball breaks, it doesn't go to shit, it just breaks, and he's sprinting. He knows, crap, he's I'm in a position here. He doesn't, listen, no one expects sheet to... To, sh to shoot from there, but Marshall knows, listen, I'm 10 yards, 15 yards too far forward here, I have to sprint. Most of the time when that ball breaks out, the keeper's able to back pedal, and it, you know, it's not that big of a danger, but because he knows he's 10 or five, 5 or 10 yards too far forward, he turns and sprints, realises he's, he's, uh, he's out of position. I suppose the question that everybody would ask is, why was he there in the first place? I know it was relatively early in that uh, second half, and, and mm -hmm. Scotland were in possession just prior to Schick getting hold of that breaking ball. But why did he end up so far up the pitch? Um, I don't know. Usually, listen, it's easy to come into that position. If the ball breaks, he can make a step forward five or ten yards. He hasn't. He started there. I suppose they have possession. It was Hendry went to have the shot. He, he probably just drifts into that position without even realising it. You can see him realise it instantly. I'm way too far forward here, but um, you'll, have to, you'll have to, if we get an interview or whatever, we'll have to ask him ourselves. Yeah, I know there's a bit of a culture in the game at the moment, uh, Damien, where keepers seem to want to get involved a bit more, certainly in terms of the, the whole sweeper-keeper thing that Manuel Neuer and keepers like that are so good at. But was he thinking that uh, maybe I should be closer to the play? Um, yeah, I think the top teams and the top keepers, Peter, he likes your Ederson, Alisson, Neuer, yeah. as you've just mentioned, but I don't think David Marshall's maybe ever played in a team where he's been needed that high to you know offer himself to you know circulate the ball um i don't know where he's just a lapse of concentration obviously scotland are really edging up the pitch and he's just subconsciously just edging with them but uh he's obviously gone about 20 meters too far but i feel sorry for him because he's had a great campaign and uh he was obviously the hero that got them to to the euros but uh really poor position in there yeah but of course you have to credit yeah. the execution of, of patrick schick and of course he would have been buoyed by his first half goal kevin because he took that well also this was a really really good header um you know, I was just after talking about it in the studio about him being quiet and he hadn't brought it into the game. He's a few loose touches, um, but in this instant, it was Soufal went down, great run down the right side, puts in a decent ball, but still, she has to rise. Rise above's handy there, it's a big, strong centre half. He thinks he's going to win this. She has probably a, a, a half a foot in height on him. Great leap from a, from a sort of a standing jump, you yeah. know, and then to not, to, to get to, to win the header, that's the easy thing. It's to direct it into the corner. To, to not be tempted to put, try put power in it, to use the cross, use the power that's on the ball, use your head to glance it back across yourself and into the side net. And lovely, lovely header and, and the difference maker. You forget to mention how brave he is there. Like we're talking about, obviously, is the goal in the second half, but to put his head in there, like you wouldn't catch me going anywhere near. He reminds me of Kevin a bit. That's probably why I don't know how many concussions you had in the end. But I can't remember. Unbe yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable bravery. Yeah, and, and Damien, you mentioned the fact that, I mean, he's moved a couple of times and he's moved for decent money, but uh, these are the tournaments where players put themselves in, in the shop window. I mean, is Patrick Schick s s somebody that uh, we'd say the Premier League, teams of the Premier League would be looking at now? Absolutely, he looks the real deal. Like I said, he's had a couple of big moves, he's had a good season. Um, every scout in the world at every top club in the world will be watching this tournament and uh, that's not a bad start, is it? So. Certainly isn't. If you could could combine Dyke's work, work rate, enthusiasm, energy, and Sheik, finish. you'd have you'd have the perfect player. Um, if Dykes could finish, he'd have a couple of chances which we're going to see. But no, Sheik was was. Listen, big moments, big goals, big tournament, big player. Yeah, and we'll have a, have a look at Dyke's contribution in a while. But first of all, I mean, we have to remember, Scotland, they had, I think, the lion's share of possession and also they created plenty of chances. So they'll, they'll be very frustrated. It's not that they, yeah. they were horrendous to there, they played really badly. I mean, they created all no. these chances but couldn't score. This is what Steve Clark is going to have to say to get them back on their feet again. Um, you know, right from the start of the second half again, I think it's, it's Henry here, Hendry here off the crossbar, but this was a constant team. I have eight chances, I think, here. Eight good chances. This was a great bit of goalkeeping. Fantastic under pressure. Uh, you know, it just continues. The check get caught ahead of the ball a lot of the time. Um, this one's a, another deflected shot. It looks like it's in, lands on top of net. You know, you have to say as well that we're a bit unlucky. Yeah, um, yeah, some of those things were. would have easily gone in. Dykes, you know, it was causing problems all day. It was getting on the end of the stuff. Two chances at the back stick. This is the one, really. You know, this is yeah. where he makes himself a hero. Falls perfectly for him. Could have maybe took a touch. And he didn't, you know. And, and that was the way it sort of was for Scotland. Um, you know, but talking about Steve Clark and how do you motivate them? How do you get them going? You just show them a replay of that and say, yeah. listen, do something similar against England. And one of those, that deflection, one of those things will fall to you. We will get a goal. And that's what you have to believe. There's no point in not believing it. You show the evidence to the players and hope that it inspires them and gets them back on their feet for the next game.
Yeah, Damien, there's nothing wrong with 19 attempts on goal, five of them on target. You know, it's, it's, it's not a bad return rate from Scotland. No, listen, I do think there's a bit of un unluckiness there, but like I said, at the top there, I just think it's, it's down to that bit of class that um, they didn't have today, and I don't think they quite have gone forward. Yeah, a fairly realistic appraisal of the game by John McGinn there, and he mentioned basically what we've been talking about. I mean, they did lots of things right, but of course, if you don't finish, it's all in vain, Damien. The, the question is, what, what can they do now between now and Friday? I mean, you're not all of a sudden going to improve your finishers. Uh, no, that doesn't happen overnight. Kevin will tell you that. Uh, he's the expert in that field. I certainly am. But uh, like you just said there, it is a free hit. Um, it's a derby at the end of the day. And uh, I'm not saying anything can happen, but it'll be a totally different game. I know I touched on it before the game. You didn't see too much of it. They will sit in against England. They'll have to because of yeah. England's quality. Like you said, can they nick a point? They're going for three. But if they nick a point and go into the Croatia game, if you look at the Croatia uh, performance against England yesterday, uh, I wasn't blown away with it. I don't think anyone else was. So They were struggling with their finishing too. Yeah, and listen, it's still on for them. Uh, they're believers. They have that Celtic blood. So it's still on for them to get through. But like you said, I don't know how many times there he mentioned that lack of quality in their finishing today. And it's so true. Yeah, so, Kevin, what, I mean, the squad, they'll have to keep their heads up. Yeah. And, of course, as Damien mentioned already, they will look forward to going down to Wembley and trying to get something from England on their patch. Yeah, it's a good game to come out of, to go into that, you know, a distraction, a massive rivalry. Um, listen to McGinn talk there now. He's a lot of talk about him before, and one of those chances maybe had have fallen to him. He's a good finisher. It didn't. He didn't have a great game, very quite McTominay in himself. You know, how do you get them into the game in England? England would be a totally different game. Adrenaline would be flowing more of a nervousness tonight. They're sort of, they sort of have a free hand against England. You know, they're not really expected. They can go out, they can be sit tight, frustrate England, get hopefully, if there's a crowd there, get you know, the atmosphere going against England and then try break. It'll be a totally different game than it was tonight. And that's what they have to play for. And then hope something falls to Nile Hope he's on his game because he was very, very quiet tonight. And he's their leader, the one in the qualifiers, the big name, the one people were talking about is going to have a great tournament. So they need him to, to come forward now. Yeah, I'd be interested to get your views on the defensive performance of Scotland today because uh, they weren't really horrendously tested by the Czech Republic. I mean, two moments of brilliance from Schick gave them the two goals. But you think that England will pose a far greater threat going forward considering their attacking talent and how that Scottish back three in particular, the central three, how they'll react to what we would expect would be a fairly uh, an onslaught from England, really, and their Yeah, well, you talent. you'd hope, anyway, that there's that bit of quality to come in, and that's Kieran Tierney. I'm not sure how bad the injury is. It sounds like it's just muscular. Uh, he's obviously got previous with that. Whether he's fit again in four or five days, I'm not so sure. Um, but everything today, Schlick was invo involved in. Um, you know, they'd two, three decent enough chances. Schlick, Derrida in behind, the captain, they were the... The real bit of quality there, Schlick's movement again, tries a little back heel, back to the Rita, tries to put it in the top corner. Um, but there is that, you know, it's a bit of a lopsided team. There's world-class quality at times in some parts of the Scottish team, but like in the back line, we've, you know, Grant Tanley at Norwich, yeah, he's had a, a good career and all, but the likes of him when he comes up, O'Donnell from Motherwell, the, the wing-back as a touch on a half-time, when they come up against real quality, the likes of Schlick, yeah. I think they're going to struggle. And, and it'll be a different level again when they face uh, that yeah, England. Yeah, it will, but they'll be playing different as well. They'll be really tight. Yeah. Damien spoke about before and how they sit deep, and they didn't really do that today. They were quite open. They got people forward. They got a lot of men into the box. It uh, just didn't drop for them. But against England, you would imagine they'll be sitting deep, um, trying to take the sting out of the game, trying to really frustrate England, and then trying to catch them on the break. I, you know, I don't think defensively Scotland were... You know, two world, world-class goals. Um, they didn't look... Our place defensively, I thought they were quite solid. The but was that was because the they problem weren't was the really threatened the pitch. by the Czechs? No, they weren't threatened by the Czechs. Was, but, but the Czechs had good players on the pitch. Um, it was more, listen, yeah. they were well organised, Scotland. They played quite well. The two goals, you can't pin that on the defence. Grant Handley could win that header from the, from the cross. You know, he's a big centre half. You could nitpick and say um, he should win that and clear it. But, you know, and they weren't dragged off the pitch. They weren't dragged around the place. They weren't, you know, time and time again, Czechs were coming forward or win it back and, and there was no danger. So... Defensively, you'd have to be quite happy with them. Robertson, from a left-back position, was quite good for the first 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe he quietened down. He started to struggle a bit um, going the other way defensively. So maybe that side of it. But the main thing for Scotland is how do they score? You know, they couldn't yeah. score against the Czechs. How do they score? Is it a case of frustrating England for a long period of time, hoping to get a corner set piece, something like that? that one of those ones that just lobbed over the crossbar, just went mm -hmm. wide, just where... 
the Czech keeper got back in fairness and made a fantastic save. Something goes their way, hoping for that bit of luck. You know, go to Wembley, come out with a one-nil win, and all of a sudden they've belief again. They're back in the competition. Well, uh, maybe on another day, something would have gone right for Lyndon Dykes. He certainly worked his socks off, Damien, didn't he? Yeah, like I said at the top of the show, he, he can be a bit of a bully um, at Wembley against England. Do you not play him because of his finishing today, or do you play him because he was a handful uh, throughout? Uh, decent movement here to get a shot off. Um, you know, you, when you see the finishes today, maybe you think Lee Griffiths, if he got himself fit, he finishes without doubt. Uh, obviously, Kevin played with him at Wolves. I worked with him at Celtic. He's possibly the best or one of the best finishes I've ever seen. Absolutely incredible. And definitely finishes one of these today. Can he do that? No. But like I said, that might be your out ball against England. They're going to have a lot of the ball. Scotland will be deep, so they're going to have to hit channels. They're going to have to just thump it clear at times to, to Lyndon Dykes. But there's no doubt he's a handful. And as you can see there, putting a bit of blood on Callis's uh, forehead. So I'd like to see him, and I think he will play in the, in the um, Wembley game. Kevin? Yeah, I think so. I think he'll need to, because he'll be... He's that type of guy who doesn't mind being isolated up front in his own. He seems to love the battle, love the confrontation. You can imagine him getting stuck into John Stones good and early, knocking him over, making him realise he's in the game. Listen, he's not going to... He doesn't have the goal-scoring record. He mightn't finish, but if he can do that for 60 or 70 minutes, soften up England, get Scotland up the pitch a bit. Talking about Lee Griffiths, he'd have been a great player to bring off the bench there when chances are dropping around and the, and, and the hard work has been done yeah. by Dykes. Someone like that, I'm surprised they didn't bring him. Um, he scored, a, you know, he came in the playoffs, scored a penalty. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a real good goal scorer. And I don't really have that person to come off the bench. I know he's not, his fitness and things like that, question marks, but when you want someone to come on and make a difference, um, he'd have been a great option for them. But I do see, I do see Dykes playing and starting against yeah. England. Um, listen, chance dropped soon there, he might take it.